Hello. Do you have a wobble in your ride and you're having trouble just finding out what the cause is? Maybe you finally decided, well, it's just wore out. It's just the nature of the beast and I'm gonna have to put up with it. Perhaps not. I may have a solution for your wobble. Don't wanna go on wobbling. So let's look at the obvious first. Very first thing, obviously I would check the tire pressure. Make sure your tire pressure's up because that will definitely cause a wobble. There goes a deer running across the parking lot. Oh boy. Uh, love seeing wildlife. Yep, didn't expect that. <laughs> check your tire pressure. I have had a wobble. It was really bad. I'd go across the parking lot get up to about 35 miles an hour, take my hands off the handlebars, and handlebars go flopping wildly, beating me in both knees at the same time. Uh, not a good outcome, not, uh, not a good sign when you're on the road. You, you don't wanna be doing that. When you're looking out for traffic, for wildlife, just like a deer, um, looking out for the unexpected, cause that's what, what always happens on the road is the unexpected, what you're not looking for. So always stay alert. Stay focused and keep your head on the swivel, they say. And that's true. Keep your eyes going forward where you're going, where you're going to go. Like you're going around a curve, you look directly in front of you, then you look around as far as you can around the curve, but directly in front of you, and all around the curve as far as you can see. And uh, keep your eyes on the mirrors. Check the mirrors about every five to 13 seconds, they say. At least that's what they tell truck drivers. But. Um, I know that's sometimes hard to do, but let's get back to your wobble because that's something you can't forget about. That wobble can be resolved, sometimes easily, sometimes not. But like I said, check your tire pressure, make sure it's up to where it's supposed to be. Whether it be 42 pounds or whatever, go buy your motorcycle handbook, go buy your sticker on your swing arm. If you've changed size of tires on your bike, then you need to take that in consideration. I like to try to stick with the stock size tire on my bike. And then I go by the bike manufacturer's recommendations. If it is a different size tire, go by what's on the tire. But you also have to consider the weight, uh, maximum weight. I think on my bike, it's, um, I believe it's 42 for both of them. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, but if that doesn't cure your wobble, don't despair. There's still a few other things you need to check. Another, see if uh, you have some of those weights, tack on weights. Maybe you lost one. Well, you can tell, look at the rim, you'll see the outline of weight, and there's not one there. You know you lost it. Uh, may need to have your wheels rebalanced. Another way is what was wrong with my bike. I had a 1985 Honda Aspen Cade Goldwing that I bought brand new. I think it was a leftover 85 actually, but it's never been titled as a brand new bike. And there goes the deer running back the other way. Is he caught in the fence and can't get out? Because there is a double fence over there and I don't understand why, but there is. Hopefully he can get out the same way he came in. Uh, but he's in the grass just off the parking lot here. But uh, sorry about that. We're still wobbling, aren't we? And we haven't got it fixed yet. My gold wing, after I got, I don't know, probably 60,000 miles on it, began to have a slight wobble. When you let go of the handlebars, I think it did it about 35, it would start, handlebars start shaking violently back and forth. And so I did some reading, a lot of reading. And uh, I found out it's actually recommended and part of your routine maintenance schedule that nobody seems to pay any attention to. Excuse me, that uh, you check the torque of your steering head crown bearings, that's it. The steering head crown bearing should be torqued. Ever so often, uh, I don't remember exactly, go by your bike, go by what your bike says. Whether it be over 24,000, 36,000, whatever. But I didn't have a big enough wrench for the bike, and I didn't have a torque wrench at the time. I got one now. So I took it to a trusted local bike dealership. There's one guy who specialized, all he worked on was gold wings. 
and ask him, says, have you ever had a customer have you brought a bike in and had you torque the steering crown bearings? He said, no, nobody ever has. I said, well, my bike's got a wobble. I want you to check them, torque them, and see if it helps at all. If not, we may have to replace the steering head crown bearings. Because uh, if you abuse this or neglect it long enough, they're going to wear out and you're going to have to replace them. Uh, luckily, mine were not worn out. The uh, train mechanic torque the steering head crown bearings. I picked the bike up and it was like brand new all over again. Loved it, absolutely loved it. Even the tires wore better, wore longer. And so uh, makes it a lot safer when your bike is steady and true and feels like it's on a track and it's, it's in the groove and it's just stuck to the ground like it's supposed to be. It, it really gives you confidence when you're going down the road, especially on different types of asphalt, whether it be concrete, tar and gravel, uh, asphalt, or any other type of road you may go down but that was a big help and uh, I educated myself I, as also I educated my mechanic something that he could be look, looking out for if somebody comes in so I got a bad wobble and I don't know it's not the tire pressure so let's go find out what it is but that may be your problem if you have a wobble in a tire or in a wheel and your handlebars are flipping back and forth violently and you think the thing's possessed well it's not you just need to torque it just plain routine maintenance also since we're talking about bearings i need to bring this up please don't ever pressure wash your bike now if you have a dirt bike i can kind of understand it but do not ever direct the pressure down at the hub you'll wash out the grease of the hub and your bearings will wear out prematurely whether it be a Harley or a Mutaguzi, Benigali, Ducati, Honda, Yamaha, Suzuki, Triumph, BSA, you name it. Never direct the high pressure of water at the hub of a motorcycle. It'll wash out the grease, you'll ruin the bearings. And you're gonna have a, a premature bearing failure can't stress that enough but when you have a problem with a bike always look at the obvious first saves you a lot of time a lot of money because a lot of these things are regular routine maintenance anyway um, I like to call it um, preventative maintenance you got to check your battery you, you got to check your tire pressure you got to check your lights horn like a pre-trip inspection before you get on the bike and go riding you got to check everything and it'll make for a safer ride check your oil uh, some bikes use oil uh, check your oil before you go on any trip and if you know for a fact it does use a little bit take a quart half a quart or so along with you so you can top it off don't want to run a bike low on oil because you'll, you'll scorch the rings and then the thing will start using oil. You're using even more oil. And uh, sorry I'm a southerner and uh, we get lazy. <laughs> I don't always say oil. Sometimes I just say oil. When I say oil, I know what I'm talking about. But it's oil. And uh, go by what your book says, whether it be 10 W40. Uh, 20W50 for an air-cooled V-twin, and so on. Uh, some use 10, 20W30, some use 10W30, 10W40. Um, I like to use synthetic. Uh, most bikes now, I think they recommend a synthetic blend. Um, but do this, change it on a regular basis. It's the lifeblood of your engine. If you want this thing to last, it's an investment. If you want your investment to last many, many years of enjoyment with uh, no breakdowns on the road, no uh, leaving you on the side of the road, you got to take care of it, and it'll take care of you. I promise you, you take care of your bike, it'll take care of you. And that can go a long way. So with that, hopefully by now you've resolved your wobbling front wheel 
you're slapping the handlebars. Uh, yeah, that's a tank slapper. But uh, something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I got a lot of videos I've been wanting to do, but uh, finding the time. But I think this is of utmost importance here at the near the beginning of the riding season. Uh, seen a lot of bikes on the road recently, and I'm sure they did, did their preventative maintenance. Wash your bike regularly and polish it. Protect the paint. That's not the only reason, though. When, it, when you wash a bike, you're up close and personal to every part on it. The chain, the shaft drive, the belt drive, uh, your brake, how it works, your rear brake, uh, your levers, clutch, front brake. You're up close and personal to everything. If your bike has a hydraulic clutch, check to see it's topped off, it's full, but don't overfill it. I know a person who had a Harley and had it serviced at a prominent Georgia Harley dealership. I'm not gonna mention which one. They overfilled the brake fluid, the front brake fluid. He got up the road and the front brake literally locked up when he was on the highway. Luckily, he didn't lose it. Um, and it was blocking the road. I helped him get it out of the road until a tow truck could get there. And uh, he was from out of state, I think from Pennsylvania. So uh, don't overfill your brake fluid. Use the recommended brake fluid that it calls for. So uh, let's stay safe. Get out there, have a good time. But take the time to properly maintain your bike first. And you'll have an enjoyable ride and you'll make it back home. Oh, by the way, this is the Blue Ridge Biker Channel. Sorry, I was going to throw that in er earlier and just slipped my mind when that deer come running by me. Yep, this is the Blue Ridge Biker Channel. Yeah, I'm at work in the truck and uh, going to be back on the bike really soon. Uh, I've got to do a maintenance on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Got to do maintenance on it. I got to do... Um, smart plugs and an air filter which is no big deal but when you're working a lot uh, it's hard to time hard to find the time and uh, I have to admit I got a little bit of asthma and this uh, humidity I can't be out in the building working on the bike for very long uh, that's my excuse and the shop wants over $300 and I'll be doggone I'm gonna pay somebody $300 to put spark plugs in just cause you have to pull the tank uh, but anyway, get that done. She'll run like a brand new one. And uh, can't wait to get that done. Also, there's been a couple bear sightings. Four-legged bears. Sometimes they walk on two in central North Carolina, which is very unusual. Usually they don't, they don't ever come this far down off the mountain. They usually stay on the mountain. Uh, not everybody's way, but here lately... It seems like that's where everybody wants to build, up on the mountaintop. They move it in, encroaching on wildlife's habitat. And that's why the wildlife are coming down here in the suburbs of the Piedmont section of North Carolina. But there's a place I've been wanting to go to. There's a cave. And, I'm, and since we've had these bear sightings, I'm kind of leery about going into those caves, but I'm going to do it anyway, just for the sake of getting, getting a video out to you. Should be a lot of fun. So with that, tune in to the Blue Ridge Biker Channel. Please click the like button if you liked anything about this video. It's been helpful, informative. Please click the like button. That'll let me know and put, give me incentive to put out more videos. Click subscribe. Subscribe so you'll know when the next video will be coming out. And uh, notifications. And Because uh, I enjoy doing it. I really do. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this right now. <laughs> But uh, take care, wear your gear, and remember, life is a journey. Enjoy the ride. God bless. This is the Blue Ridge Biker Channel.